you're listening to the SAS Says Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Rocha, also known as SAS. I identify as a woman, a wife, and a mother. That should tell you a lot already. And over the last few years, I've learned the value of talk therapy. I have seen how my inner work not only enhances my own well-being, but also my marriage, my parenting, my relationships. And in fact, you wouldn't be hearing this right now if it weren't for the work I've done. My mission is to debunk the misconceptions and stigmas around what therapy is and who it's for. Let's normalize working on our mental health and seeking help when needed. We've all heard of self-care, self-help, and self-love, but do you often wonder how to actually make it all happen? I do. You'll hear strategy-based conversations with professionals, as well as inspiring and validating stories from women who are just like you and me. Think of this podcast as the weekly therapy sessions you didn't know you needed. With a dash of sass, a lot of vulnerability, and me, relentlessly asking, but how? Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to welcome a family member, Eileen Han, to the show. Eileen is my mom's cousin, so she's... I guess my second cousin, is that how that works? I don't know, but she's my cousin. She is also a leadership consultant who works with firms like Anheuser-Busch, Ericsson Worldwide, General Motors, Legoland, the San Diego Padres, interior design firms, as well as many other smaller entrepreneurial firms. Eileen has also worked with me in the past. I graduated from college went out to California and spent a couple of days with her really just doing some self-development work. I didn't know that it was called that then, but it was just a couple of really unique, fun days, kind of tapping into some of her professional resources to start to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And I also remember taking some really fantastic walks with her, enjoying some amazing outdoor dining experiences, all the things you're going to hear Eileen talk about today. I know from firsthand experience that she actually does and she makes time for us. So anyway, Eileen has this unique knack for teaching companies and entrepreneurs how to ignite energy into their work bringing their employees more joy, peace, purpose, and prosperity. I know that so many of you listening are out there like me, trying to juggle motherhood, running a business, starting a brand, a platform, and I don't need to tell you this, but I will. It's hard. So Eileen is here to talk about how to overcome those feelings of burnout that hit so many of us. She's got a lot of great strategies. She's just an all-around wonderful human being. And I'm so excited for you to experience her and all that she has to offer. So here she is. Hi, Eileen. So fun to have you here. Thanks for coming on the show. (laughs) Oh, thanks, Christy. It's so great to be here with you. I know. I'm actually surprised it hasn't happen yet I'm like I was thinking about that like what the heck I gotta get Eileen on here (laughs) oh my goodness well we've got a lot to go over um I think if I just in thinking about uh, the notes you had sent over and some of our back and forth before I was really thinking about how I think that so often entrepreneurs content creators we start doing this work because we have this idea of, you know, creating our own schedule, being our own boss, like creative freedom. And then we get into it and the overwhelm and the abundance of responsibilities actually hit. And we lose sight of like this vision that we had in the first place. So I want you to sort of take us back to the beginning of this process and tell us how we can start to ensure that the life that we are like think we're going to have is the one we're actually creating the life and the lifestyle I should say that we're actually creating (laughs) like what are we doing wrong and how do we do it better (laughs) loaded (laughs) question great well there's never anything wrong and what's, mm-hmm. what's so fun is that initial spark 
that gets you excited to do a business is yeah. really what's exciting, right? So there's something in you that wants to come out, wants to be expressed, wants to be explored, wants to be done. And that's the joy piece within you that you came here to do. So that's really exciting. But what does happen, is, like you said, it's very common for people to have their own business or even working in businesses that they love, at one point they loved, is that they, you know, like you said, get overwhelmed, right? And, and how they spend their time and what their life becomes um, can be unpleasant at times, right? And it's like, how, what am I doing here? I used to love this or I got into this because it was what I love and maybe now I'm not. Um, so how do I live my best life and enjoy life um, in, in, in where I'm at, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I always tell people is, first of all, at any moment in time, you're always kind of changing and evolving, right? So when you started your business, you had a spark and an interest of how you want to live then. Maybe it's different now. Maybe it's six months later, a year later, five years later, right? Maybe your business has grown or changed or different things have evolved, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step really in kind of, kind of coming to this place of like, how do you live your best life is to really look at right now, what does your best life mean to you? To take a moment and just really define what kind of life it would be. Like if you came here for the sole purpose of living a fun life on earth and you could do anything you wanted, right? You had this like blank canvas that you could just like, just draw the, the, this beautiful picture of what your life would be like. You know, what would you put into it? What would those components be, right? So, you know, for me many years ago, you know, it was like, oh, I want to have, you know, a family. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to have a house. I want to have a job that I love and enjoy. I want to have friends, right? So I start creating my canvas of what I like, right? And, and then, you know, what else about that? You know, oh, I want some adventure in my life. I want to add to, you know, some cool trips that I take, or, or maybe I like to kind of take some risks and things. And so I'm taking risks in my business or risks in my life or whatever, whatever those elements are, right? And then, and then sometimes you even come to a place where like this campus that you created, you've already kind of done it all. The picture is <laughs> kind of there. The kids have actually moved out. <laughs> and now so it's what? time to kind of recreate, mm -hmm. right? That life that you want to have. So you can at any moment recreate what is that life? What is your best life? Because what's your best life isn't mine. And what's so cool is there's no one best answer, right? Yeah. So some people's best life is I, I never get married. I never have kids. I live in a van. I travel around the world. I take off on a moment's notice. I do my business remotely, right? Organically, beautifully. Everything just unfolds just in time as I need it to. Very different, right? Than the person mm -hmm. that wanted the house and the, the job and the this and the that, right? Mm -hmm. So step one for everyone is really where are you right now at this moment? And how do you want to define what would be your best life and, and really take the time to create it, to make it up, to make it fun. Because I, I believe that we're here, we're really meant to enjoy ourselves and have fun while we're here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't, we never get that, got that memo, right? Yeah. So, you know, some people, I'd be curious to hear what you heard growing up. It was like, you know, you're here to survive, mm -hmm. right? You're here to get by, or you're here to make your mark, or you're here to work hard and play hard. Right. Or, you know, you hear all these different paradigms of how we were, you know, this little seeds that was planted or, or this thought process that was told to us. So I'm curious, what was for you? Was there a little why we're here? Is, but, you know, no one said we're here to have fun and have a great time and to play and dance. And yeah. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, it was very work oriented. I feel like my my parents lived and breathed their work, you know, and I I do remember hearing a lot of a lot of work hard, play hard. Um, but, <laughs> but I guess as a kid, what I thought, like, I didn't see a lot of the play hard. You know, I, I remember my parents taking trips with friends here and there. And like, I knew that was a thing that happened. But as a kid, I didn't really connect that to the play hard. And so yeah. I think it's interesting too. just having this conversation earlier that what we perceive as kids we kind of have to like reevaluate <laughs> when we're an adult right because yes i stepped into adulthood and and i guess more motherhood with this like go 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 productivity all the way work hard work hard work hard thing and it really wasn't until i realized that that really didn't work for me that i had to go back and go where did i get this from yeah and 
I, I said I got it from my parents, but then when I really look at it, it's like, well, you know what? They also really valued family time. You know, they would leave work at three o'clock to come to softball games and then go back to work. And that's what they had to do. And so it just intentionally looking back, I see more of the play than I think that I was seeing as a kid. Um, which is, which is interesting, but I think too, you know, like you said about get like, maybe not getting the memo about life being joyful or having fun. Like I was thinking as you're talking, even just, even just having step one be to like create your life and think about it and write it down. And, and what do you want? I, I have to imagine that there's even a roadblock there with feeling like you have permission to want those things, right? Like yes. what what how do we get through that? How do we how do we work to give ourselves permission to have joy and and you know not be so stressed out about what everyone else is telling us is success or is achievement or you've made it, so to speak. Right. So that's really that's not, am I worthy? Mm. Am I worthy of fun? Yeah. Am I worthy of joy? Am I worthy of play? Am I worthy of taking a weekend to go to Palm Springs and go to a spa with my girlfriend mm -hmm. on Mother's Day weekend when I should, right? Be home yeah. with my kids and they're making me breakfast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, this is where you get the opportunity and, and wherever you are in your life, it's like that, that aha wake up moment where it's like, oh, I came here by myself, from, right? Mm -hmm. And I have this one life. Mm -hmm. How do I want to live it? It doesn't matter what society says, what other people say. It doesn't matter what my parents did. Yeah. There's something inside of me that wants to happen, that wants to be expressed. That's excited to be here, to do things. And we know it when we're not excited, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in a job or situation or doing something and you're like, oh, this is not fun. This is not fun. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when it's super fun, you're like, this is great. <laughs> Yeah, And yeah. so it's really kind of coming back to like, what's your, what's your belief about life? Yeah. You know, and if you want to live your best life, it's so different for everybody. You mm -hmm. know, some people's best life, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, to give you another analogy, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, what if you were came down here and you were able to create any kind of movie you want mm -hmm. and you, could, you get to be the star right? Like what kind of movie would you be want, you know, want to be in, right? So like for me, it's like, I wanted to be in a romance, right? I love <laughs> romance. <laughs> so it's like, I want the romance part, but I also wanted the like action adventure. You know, I traveled to lots of different countries. I've had lots of different challenging situations. Um, I, I also wanted business. Like I love business. It's fun. It's like, I liked Wall Street. I mean, I like, I'm just like the excitement of like business and change and intrigue and suits, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, all these different fun business problems, situations, things to be solved. So I like that. Right. And then I like the Disney channel with the family, you know, the family movies and the kids and the things like Hallmark. Right. Yeah. So what kind of, and also I, I like mother Teresa, mm. you know, it's like even to the point where, you know, I want, I went spent a year in India where we're volunteering and, and spending time in Mexico, building houses and community centers and, mm. you know, bunk beds and orphanages. It's just like what I feel driven to do, mm -hmm. but I also love to dance. <laughs> I mean, someone that like when I was like eight you know 16 to I don't know what it was 30 I would go out dancing like every Friday Saturday night I had to go dancing because it was so much fun mm -hmm. why not everyone feels this way right right some people hate dancing some people love to paint yeah. some people love to play music right so this is like our our story it's in us yeah. so what kind of movie I'm just getting Chrissy just for fun like what kind of movie like were you excited to be in yourself? And some people like drama. They like a lot of drama. They mm -hmm. like a lot of things. You know what I mean? There's like mm -hmm. all kinds of movies, right? There's like these, you know, TV type movies or movies. You know what I mean? So what yeah. gets you excited? What kind of movie? What kind of life? What kind of, what yeah. would you create for yourself? I don't know. Right now, right now I want to create one where I'm like, I don't like some kind of comedy on a island. <laughs> Like I need to laugh more and I need a vacation. Okay, <laughs> like good. that's what I feel. I'm like, I need an all-inclusive and a boat and a beach 
and I need like just people on standby, like doing comedy shows on route on routine because yeah, I don't know. That's what I feel like I need That's more of. You know what? That is really good. Seriously. I mean, I'm, I'm being very serious. Knowing yeah. you feel that and need that, that's part of why you're here. Yeah. Right. And that's beautiful and fun, right? That makes life feel like it's worth living, so to speak, right? That makes yeah. life fun and enjoyable. And so this is where it's like, we have to kind of step out into like, so what am I going to do about that? Right. Like, is there a comedy club in my town? Can I start with that? Can mm -hmm. I book the all inclusive? And when can I book it? Like, when's a good time? Yeah. And how often do I need these all inclusives? <laughs> you know, seriously, like yeah. quarterly. Like <laughs> I'm really big on this quarterly concept. Like when I was in like the total throes of like business, right? Like loving my job, loving my work, tons of work, tons of the kids going on, everything's happening at the highest level. It felt like everything is high, right? Yeah. I booked quarterly weekends at the spa. This was total like quiet. Nothing happens there. No one even talks. It was a time that they used to shush you if you talked. <laughs> <laughs> There's no cell phones and no talking allowed at this really remote um, yeah. place called Two Bunch Palms in uh, Palm Desert. But I would book it quarterly and I would come back feeling like ready. Yeah. Love and life. I get that experience when I go to the dentist now. Like <laughs> that's where I'm at. I'm like, oh, I need a, I need a physical. Great. It'll be quiet. Like no one will talk to me. Like that's how I feel. <laughs> yes. So, th so think about that. And again, you know, quarterly might be too often. Who knows what it is? Everyone's different. Right. But cre start creating that into your life. Like what are those elements? Create that picture for yourself. Yeah. What, you know, do you want it? How, how, how much do you want to work? How little do you want to work? Do you, I, I absolutely want to have an international trip with my, with my family. That's an action adventure, someplace highly unusual in a jungles are good kind of place lots mm -hmm. of wild animals I mean that's part of my picture of the, what for me is a well you know what I mean the life my best life mm -hmm. lots of dancing for you it's like laughter I yeah. mean we need to like get those you know the shows on we need to go to the comedy store we need to like <laughs> surround ourselves with people that are funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> we need to start reading joke books I mean you know whatever it is right I yeah mean, make time for that yeah yeah where so you know I, unfortunately, I I feel like I more often experience, particularly women, particularly moms, are the ones to struggle with this idea that life and work should be fun and life and work can be fun. You know, where did that come from for you? Was that innate from the beginning? Did you have to learn it? Was there an experience that changed your perspective? Where did all of that come from for you, for you? Yeah, well, I did. Um, my mom was very much about fun. Mm -hmm. She loved to have fun. She loved to have parties. And so she made a point of celebrating like every birthday, every occasion, every accomplishment. You know what I mean? She'd want to celebrate. And, she, and even if celebration back in those days was just like, you blow up your own balloons. You know what I mean? You put <laughs> right. some crepe paper out. Right, it you wasn't buy this. buy a cake from, you know, wherever. Like, yeah. Local, you know, place, and then you have pizza, and that's the party, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? right? Or it could be a wonderful Thanksgiving meal where people are there for twelve hours, laughing and playing, you know, singing on the singing machine, which is mm -hmm. how we grew up, right? The singing machine. Um, and so I, I was, you know, very lucky to grow up with a mother that was like, "Hey, let's go have fun like other kids do," mm -hmm. and that's what her her mother used to say to her is like, "Let's go have some fun like the other other kids are having fun." I'm like, "Yeah, wait." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was exposed to that. Um, you know, that was growing up, but also had very much the strong work ethic. And then I, I just really, I, I really globbed onto this work hard, play hard concept, right. At, at you know, probably in my twenties, because that's kind of what a lot of people do, right. It's like work. And, and, and I, I surrounded myself with people, business people, professionals, colleagues that did that. They'd be like, Hey, we're going to work real hard. We're going to make this money. And then we're all going to go to Hawaii. Hawaii mm -hmm. was like the big thing. And we're going to stay at like the high. Oh my God, it's so expensive there. No way. I'm like, yes, because we deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember hearing someone was one couple challenge my husband and I, because we didn't stay at the Hyatt, you know, we did the Hawaii and the Hyatt and the airfare. I was just like outrageously expensive. How can we possibly do that? And they said, how much do you both make? You don't have to give me the number, but I want you to add it up and I want you together. And then what's 10% of that? Mm-hmm. And then they said, can you, are you worthy of spending 10% of what you make on yourself to have fun hmm. once a year? 
that was it. And that was in my, that was, I was probably 26, 25 then. Wow. And I'm like, we're going to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> we're staying at night. Book the tickets. <laughs> yeah. And it made sense to me, this concept of like, you can't give yourself 10%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can give yourself 10%. Yeah. Right? When you say it like that, it's like, yeah. 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 And then I had a, a real pivotal moment with my girlfriend who, um, like I said, I had a girlfriend that I had a baby. She didn't have a baby yet, but shortly thereafter she did. And she would say, let's go to, to this spa, two bunch palms in Palm Springs. And again, I was, you know, I, I just had a baby. You shouldn't be leaving your baby, you know, this and that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, yeah. And, I'm, and then I'm like, well, how much is it? And it was expensive, right? It's like, you know, whatever, 300 bucks. And plus you got food, plus you've got, you know, spa treatments. It's like, that sounds ridiculous. I'd be spending more than a thousand dollars on myself, Yeah, on myself. Like, am I worthy of spending a thousand dollars on myself? Yeah. And she, and it was really funny. We joked about this because I just saw her last weekend. And so the first time she's like, all right, I'll pay for the room. <laughs> <laughs> just get there. <laughs> pay for the room if you have any spot treatments. I'm like, okay, I'm worthy of that. Oh, I'll give you yeah. I'll get one treatment. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But then once I did it, it was like, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, this, this is, is worth great. it. I yeah. deserved it. I mean, I came home. I felt so great. And my husband was like, of course you can go. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I, of course I support you in doing that. And yeah. it sees how happy you are. Refreshed. Right. 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 I mean, just at those early years when my children were very small, getting away for a weekend, two nights, fine, without the children, I came back like so fired up and charged up and loving and all that. And, and then to have somebody massage me. When I'm used to taking care of the babies or the little ones or changing diapers or whatever, it was like, whoa. Yeah. So yeah. pitiful moments like that. Someone saying, you got to spend 10% of your income on yourself to have fun. Mm -hmm. You got You're worthy of going and you know what I mean? And yeah. spending a thousand dollars on yourself to do that. Right. Yeah. And then, I, yeah. Go okay. ahead. No, I was just going to no, say, I really say. like the, the 10% thing, because I think the tendency is to make a decision like that, like so emotional for women and moms. You know, we put a lot of emotion behind what it means to prioritize ourselves. But if you, in doing that for me, it kind of takes a lot of the emotion out of it and just makes it very black and white and makes it a lot easier to just say yes. Yeah, it is, it's nice to have that, isn't it? It is, it's a little thing. Um, yeah. the, the other thing was like part of my picture of like how to live my best life was to keep the romance going in the mm. relationship, right? So I'm, we're all working, we have kids, but I wanted to be, keep the, I, I wanted to be in the romance movie, can yeah. I tell you? Right? Yeah. And so what I, so again, what kind of what we, my husband and I agreed on is that every year we're gonna have one romantic getaway, mm. right, together. So we had the one family action adventure trip in the jungle that the, you know, the four of us go on. Then we had the one romantic getaway. And then I had my quarterly spas. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it was working pretty good. Yeah. And again, he, he was like, well, of course we have to have one romantic getaway. And I think what happens to a lot of people, that sounds like a lot of stuff I just outlined there. Right. Yeah. But I, you, you kind of like declare it. Yeah. And once it's declared because you wrote it down and that's what you want your picture to look like, then it happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to believe it's possible. You have to think you're worthy. You have to take, declare it. If I didn't say, if we didn't come together as a couple and agree and, and we actually agreed on a number for the family vacation, the action adventure family vacation. And it was a high one because mm -hmm. it was four people, international travel. Right. Yeah. And it was, again, it was like, no family is so important to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Travel and adventure is so important to both of us. We're so lucky we share all that. Right. Yeah. And we really were excited about having our kids see all these different countries with us mm -hmm. that it was just agreed. Yeah. Right now, I have to also consider his picture, right? I guess so. <laughs> on, his picture, on his picture, he's like, all right, this is all sounding good because it's on my picture. We both really wanted kids. We both really wanted a family. We both really wanted a house. We both really wanted the vacations. We both really loved business and working. We, don't even, we were we kind of we bought in right before we got married. But he really wanted like the monthly, let's go over the Excel spreadsheet talk. Yeah. Well, Not so much on my picture, but yeah. on his. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then he had the, Hey, I'm going to work out every, you know, every day. Mm. That's who I am. That's what I do. We yeah. do workouts and I swim or, you know what I mean? On these vacations we're taking Eileen, there has to be a gym and a pool mm. because that's part of who I am. Yeah. I'm like, no problem. They're usually the nicer hotels. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sure. I can accommodate that. 
right? <laughs> right. So again, you, you, you know, you have your picture and you're kind of, you know, obviously if you're married or if you have a significant other or whatever, you know what I mean? Incorporating that, right? But yeah. the other thing, the other breaking point that really changed for me on this play, and this is a recent one, this is probably within the last, maybe, well, since kind of COVID, honestly, mm-hmm. um, is I kind of came to a place of like, why am I here, right? And I started to listen and open up to this concept that you are that life was meant to be fun. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I heard um, someone speak about this topic, a woman named Sarah Landon. She has kind of a weekly, uh, you know, uh, yeah, weekly talk um, and a book and a couple of books and things like that, that I'm happy to share with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and she talked about that concept, like life, you know, life was meant to be fun and joyful. It's like, really? And then inside of me, there was like this, yeah, yeah. Why can't it be? Yeah. yeah. And so then, and so then I started to think about like, well, you know, what can I do more to create more fun? What if I could just wake up every day and say, what's fun? Mm-hmm. And then I started to actually remove the, what's not fun. Yeah. And that yeah. was really interesting. Yeah. Cause we have a lot of things we think we have to do that aren't fun, but then if you stop doing them, maybe you don't have to do them. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we plan it out. We declare it. And I think, like you said, the declaration is so important because I think that the declaration of it also in a way, automatically means you're going to have an easier time saying no to other things that don't align with this, right? Like I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, because I was thinking about how I want to be on a resort somewhere. And with the kids, it's hard. So I was like, you know what? What if I just declare, I didn't use the word declare, but what if I just declare that this week, you know, as a family, like a extended family, we go and do this and it like becomes this tradition that we do. And this is the way that it's going to get done because I want to go on vacation. I want my kids there, but I kind of know I really need some help with that too. And so the older cousins and the aunts and everybody will be there and everything. And it was just like that. My thought on that was in doing it that way, I have a better chance of it hap- not not being one of those things that happens once and then never again. Yeah. You know, because you get hit Absolutely. with like wedding invitations and bridal showers and all the things that start to be other people's other people's canvas. You know, it's like uh, you got to try to like balance it, but the the ones that are priority to you to me feel like they have to be like out there it's like everybody that knows me and that's in this inner circle is going to know that this week every year I'm on an on an island <laughs> like don't expect absolutely. me to be anywhere else <laughs> I I love that vision absolutely love it and it's completely possible yeah. and you have such a big beautiful family and that they would be like yes I mean I could totally see your mom and dad being like well absolutely We'll be there. Hey, guess what? I'll be there, Christy. Yeah, thank you. I know. I know. know My mom will be there. I know you would. I mean, (laughs) let's start a family tradition. See, these are the things that like in your, in your movie, in your, in your canvas, you know, what do you want on there? If you want that, do it. Why not? And the people that think it's fun will show up. Right. The people that don't won't, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Like let go of everyone's got to be there. Whoever, but there will be people that will be there Yeah. and you will do it. And if it's nothing else, it's your family tradition. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And right. that's one of the things I, I'm, I love traditions like that, because like you said, they're like, they get on the calendar, they happen every year. You feel great about it for yourself. You feel great about it for your kids. Later on, your kids talk about it. Right. And, and then you got the whole family involved and they love that. And so it's all love it. Yeah. So great. Okay. Yay. All right. So we'll work on that. Um, so plan it, declare it. And then, you know, what, what do we do? What do we do next? Well, make the phone call, book the yeah. ticket. Yeah. Right. It's actually um, like, but, but you know, part of it is get it, get, you it, get it done. Picture, you, you know, get agreement, right. Mm. Get agreement. If you have to get agreement from some people on it. Yeah. Right. And then take action to make it happen. It's like, you want to do that. You go online today and you look at flights and times and you look at your calendar and you book it. Yeah. And you just decide that, you know, another small thing is like, do you have fun every day? Start mm. with that. You know what I mean? Start with every day to give yourself permission to have fun every day, to give yourself permission to laugh every day. Mm -hmm. Um, There was, uh, 
there was there's been so many good sitcoms on these days when we talk about laughing right mm -hmm. and so 30 rock was one back in the day mm -hmm. that i used to love to watch i thought it was a riot mm -hmm. and i gave myself permission to watch whatever it was 30 minutes whatever i figured out how long they were they probably 30 minutes and just and i and my kids would we'd sit there we would laugh out mm -hmm. loud I mean, you got to, for me, it's like, I want one of these laugh out loud, sh loud shows, right? Yeah. So like, pick something and like, I'm going to give myself that laugh out loud every day. Yeah. You know, you got YouTube, you got, right. Yeah. You got so many options, right. For that. Or like, for me, it's taking a walk in nature. Mm -hmm. Like that is so joyful for me. So fun. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to play the first three songs in my playlist every day. Like, mm -hmm. we know we have, we have our like love and life playlist, right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play those three songs every day. Like, I mean, I'm hoping that all of you do a, some of this, right? Right. So again, just experiment with it. Yeah. You know, like, but, but make a plan. Don't let any day go by without doing, I mean, the, the, for me, it's now to live that fun and joy in every moment. Right. And every moment. So, right. But you got to start with like having a moment you give yourself. Right. It started for me with like, I'm going to take a walk every day in nature for one hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. If I don't have enough time, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Or I'm going to, you know, listen to my two favorite songs or, you know, pick two songs from my playlist every day that just fire me up and make me feel great. And I'm going to just like dance to myself or whatever. Yeah. Right. So it's like, whatever, you know, other things build in your life. Like, especially if you're a working mother. Okay. I would build in and you're an extrovert like me. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and you're married to an introvert, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I built in once a week. I, and I also love restaurants. I'm one of those people that love, I came to this planet. I love whining and dining. I love delicious food. I love delicious wine. I love going out to restaurants. Not everyone does. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so once a week, gosh, pretty much since I was in my, again, twenties, thirties, I would, I would book a dinner with someone. Mm -hmm. And not my husband, like I would book it with like a, someone who also loves that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times it was business associates, colleagues, coworkers, mentors, mm -hmm. but every week on my calendar, it was so fun because I got to go out to dinner, which I love to do. It's so to mm -hmm. a great restaurant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and it was really fun. Yeah. And then people who like that too are like, okay, let's book a once a month. Right. <laughs> you know I, mean? right. I, mean, I, had, I had some great mentors that literally like, you know what I mean? It was like once a quarter, they were, we were consistently on my dinner list and this, mm -hmm. man, this, but not. And I mean, think about it. I'm just giving you some ideas here. What yeah. are your ideas for you? That would be like, oh, I, I want to build these in for me. Like, what is, would that be? Yeah. I think, you know, I, I, I have thoughts, um, but what I, I, I'm picking up the most, and this might be a mis a mischaracterization. So you tell me. Maybe this is just my my projection of it, but it's the it's being like unapologetic about it. Like it's not. I don't know. Like I I hear everything you're saying. Like I built it into my schedule. I just scheduled the dinners. I this like it's getting it's getting a little easier for me. But those the just the just doing it still has a, so much tied to it like I still have a lot of feelings about really prioritizing myself and asking for the help that I would need to to make those things happen whether it be from my husband or a babysitter or my mom you know like whoever it is and it, like I said it is getting better we've we've started um with a babysitter like once every other week or so now during the week and <laughs> excuse me and our kid just getting older is helping but I don't know I just I, that's what I am taking from I think too just just knowing you right and just knowing that just get it done like you're I know you're like a doer right and so it's like I yeah. I can get in my head and let the overanalyzing take over the, the actual action part. And um, that's frustrating. Well, well, here's, yeah. here's a couple of thoughts. These are things that I had in my head early on. You've probably heard that like a happy mother is a happy family. Have yeah. yeah. Um, and I always want to be my best self. Right. And I know that I know 
that if I get rest, if I get relaxation, if I get time to myself, if I get to do the fun things that I enjoy, I show up better. Yeah. Like, so what's more important is from when I show up to my kids, to my job, to my husband, to my life, to myself, that I'm, I'm like in a good mood and that mm-hmm. I have energy and that mm-hmm. I'm excited versus, and, and if I need that time to do that, to show up that way, then I'm going to give it to myself because I'm not just, it's not just a gift for me. It's not a self, just a selfish gift for me, but I'm better yeah. for everybody. I'm better for my kids. I'm better for my job. I'm better. Right. So I really felt like in my mind, it was like a win-win. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was like, okay, I'm doing this for me. Yes. Cause I, I I'm worthy of that. I deserve that. I love myself. I honor myself, but I also know that it's not just all selfish me. Right. It's like, I'm going to, I know that I show up better. You know what I mean? More positive, more effective, more loving, more kind, more, more brilliant in my job yeah. when I have those things. Yeah. And you know that too, right? I mean, have you ever had that where like you get away for a couple of days and you come back and you got this big smile and you're like, yeah. yay, give your kids a big hug. And you're like, let's do something fun. And you know yeah. what I mean? Or you just get these brilliant ideas when you're off on your own by yourself with no one saying mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden you have like some new cool ideas about your business or what you're doing. Yeah. So no, you are better for nourishing yourself, right? Yeah. Um, and also, you know, it's been <clears throat> fascinating for me, but, you know, do you have any <clears throat> role models in your life that do this? And, mm. and when you see them, that, you know, it, it, that, that helped me also, like, give myself permission, yeah. right? So if you're surrounded by people that are like, oh, we're not worthy, we don't deserve it, we just stay home and self-sacrifice all day. Yeah. That's, you know, it's harder to step out with that, as opposed to when you have people that are like, well, no, we totally. do vacations, we work out, we take things for ourselves. And I was very fortunate to have um, a husband that he, like, he has his routine. He has his things that he wants and needs to do. And he'll say to be my best self. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and he does them and I, and, and that's it. Yeah. And it, I know it makes him better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so why is it okay for him to, and not me? Like, yeah. why does he get up and do his workout no matter what, but I can't. Right. Like, why is that okay? I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I like, and I made a note of it because this is where I'm at. I actually need to make a note of this, but when you said the, the dinner thing could be, you know, colleagues or mentors, I think I hadn't thought of that before because, you know, my, yeah, like I, I've met a lot of women through this show that, you know, not many are local, but some are more local than others. And that could be a way to start to, you know, build relationships with people who see things more in that way of just like, like I interview people that prioritize like this sort of thing all the time and help other women do the same. And, you know, and not to say that my friends or anybody close um isn't a good influence so to speak but it's you know they've all got little babies too <laughs> like yeah. it's hard you know like well yeah. we always joke in our like group chats that it's like we have to schedule something six months in advance based on you know everybody's having babies or has a newborn or is potty training or is you know whatever whatever so that's an interesting um angle is you know maybe just take it take it that next layer out of person, right? Like take an acquaintance even and schedule that, schedule that meeting. Well, well again, in, in, in all honesty, when I started with that once a week dinner, it was a business dinner. Yeah. And I felt like I could say to my husband, I have a business dinner. On yes. That's what I was you know thinking too. And I just Don didn't Jones say of, it. Of this company <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it all felt justified. Like yeah. my taking the time to do it, my spending the money on it. Right. You know what I mean? It yeah. all felt so it started with a business appointment. And again, I have my own business, right? So my business, I need to build my business. I need to grow my business. And mm-hmm. so I was either going out with a potential client, a current client, right. a mentor, or someone that's doing what I do, mm-hmm. but at a higher level so I can learn from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually I got some, some really key, cool business people that were, we both enjoyed the conversations and learned from each other. Yeah. And so we would put each other on the calendar probably quarterly. I mean, I, you know, CEOs of companies, it was, you know what I mean? Or other yeah. high level consultants or, um, you know, if, if I had a business colleague, it was like, let's, let's make a point to go out. I mean, you know, there's not enough time in the day to have all right. these conversations in business. Right. So right. let's do it over dinner. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do it over dinner. Yeah. Yeah. What you a know? novel hey, idea. <laughs> you know, let's, let's, we know we, we need to brainstorm on the next, you know, whatever. Let's do it over dinner. Yeah. 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 We've gotten, I think, and to go back to what you said to you about COVID, I think in, during, especially during COVID and then after we've really transitioned to Zoom and these, you know, virtual meetings that you kind of have to work at getting back in person. <laughs> you get almost too comfortable with just seeing people online and and not making that extra effort to be in person with someone because it's it's so different. You know, once you're sitting there with someone, the energy and, and what you talk about ends up being different and and not to mention the atmosphere of a restaurant. And I, you know, I like that sort of thing too. So that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And and, and, and then I, I didn't it. say you said it and I was thinking it of to be able to kind of rip the band-aid off to also be able to say this has an additional benefit for my work. Yeah. It helps. It helps to rip the band-aid off. I could see getting to a point where that doesn't even matter and I am able to just prioritize what I want without needing a justification, but it's almost like if the justification helps you rip the band-aid off and like do it, you know. Exactly. And yeah. also, it, it's, you know, it, it started off, I'm sure for me, it started off as a business concept. You know what yeah. I mean? I, you know, that I, I, like I wanted to work business, I want to expand it. Yeah, yeah. networking, all that. And what ended up happening was these, a lot of my business clients became friends. Mm. And so then, you know, you know, 10 years later, I feel like I'm going out with my friends. But, yeah. you know, initially it was that. And the other thing that's really cool, if you, if you don't have this in your life, um, for any women that are listening, and I would say the same for men, is we had kind of women in business, like dinner, probably once or twice a year. And again, out at a nice restaurant, treating ourselves. And we had women of different ages, generations. Mm. And it was really cool because I learned so much from successful women that were, you know, 10, 20 years older than me on, on and, and got encouragement and support to do things that I never would have done before. Like yeah. literally building, like you know, I remember one time saying to this woman, I want to, I'd love to take the summers off. You know what I mean? With my kids when they're off and they're little, right? It's like, God, it'd be so great if I could just take July and August off. In fact, if I could just take one month off, mm -hmm. like literally from work, I'd be so great. But you know, I'm a consultant. I have my own business. I you don't know, get paid if I'm off. I don't know all these things. My, well, my clients say, well, they do. My projects are over multi-months. You, you know what I mean? All these things. Mm -hmm. And she's like, do it. And she's <laughs> like, and she was, and she was actually one of, she was a client. She's like, do it. And, that, and um, I'm like, you know, tr you know, do and see what happens. And so I remember that just being so scared. And she's like, first of all, you're a consultant. So what you can tell people is you're booked. It's as simple yeah. as that. I'm yeah. booked the month of July. Right. You don't tell them anything other than that. If, right. if, if, if the fact that you're booked means you're good. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And so yeah. it's like, you're booked. You're good. That's it. I'm booked right. in July. Even if, they're, even if they're asking you in March. You know what I mean? It's like in the, for some project, it's going to take three months. Well, you know, I'm booked in July. I've already got a commitment. Yeah. Oh, you are really? Yeah. Booked the whole month. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then I remember when I said to her a couple months later, years later, I kind of want August off too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, do it. I'm like, You're no, booked. That, that's way too much. And she's yeah. like, I'm like, no, I'm going to lose clients. And I remember the first time I told a client that. I'm not available until September. Again, she goes, it's all how you talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, you want me to do some work with you? Um, next time I can start is September. It was like, what do you mean September? It's, it's like June, it's May. You're telling me you get, you know what I mean? And I said, I am booked. And he's like, well, I don't know if we can wait because we really want to get it done this summer. I'm like, I understand. She's like, she's like, stand tall, stand, yeah. you know, stand on your ground. And sure enough, now, nah, you know, our company, you're up to speed. Uh. We'll just do it when you're back. Yeah. So, you know, it's like you, th that kind of encouragement, yeah. multi, you know, multi-generational or year, whatever, co women, colleagues, men, colleagues. I mean, my son has, my son, my husband has a fantastic time going out with other men yeah. in business. He loves it. He loves his men going out to dinner every couple of whatever quarterly and talking about their stuff. Yeah. It's wonderful for everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what are some signs that we can look for when we've, we've sort of done this work? And as you mentioned, like from the beginning, 
we are always evolving and our and our seasons are always changing like I mean for us over here on the east coast literally but you know metaphorically what are some signs that we can look for that it, it might be time to reevaluate you know our canvas and and that things might want, need to change so glad you asked that because it's really about tuning into yourself and tuning into your body and this is something that I didn't learn much much later in life is that to really pay attention to how you're physically feeling mm. inside your body. You know what I mean? And so if you're feeling like physically stressed or tense or knots in your stomach or headaches, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Those are signs for you to yeah. think about how you're doing, right? Stomach's upset. You know, you're constantly getting sick. Whatever these things are, that's the sign. Mm -hmm that you need to really stop and look at what and how you're doing things. And also how you're feeling about just mentally and emotionally as well. So to me, it's like, you know, it's, it's really to checking in. It's like, I know there's an inner guidance system in my, in how I operate in the life. And I know that if I follow that, that I can have this happy, loving, fun, productive life. Right. Um, and, but when I'm busy and stressed, I can't hear it. And when I'm busy and stressed and forcing myself to just keep going, I'm not helping myself out. Mm -hmm. And so when I notice that, then I really stop and reevaluate it. And sometimes it's crazy, but you probably have this experience where life just knocks you off your feet yeah. and you're like, oh, and so, and if you see it as a sign that it's <laughs> like, oh, then you start to get it. Right. right. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a really funny because I had, I literally had, was knocked off my feet yesterday. How crazy is that? Mm. Okay. I'm walking along. I got my Starbucks in my hand. I'm talking on the phone yeah. with my ear button and I'm all loving life and I trip over something mm. that, that shouldn't have been there. Right. Now, and I fall flat oh. and my Starbucks drink goes like, it, like it literally like, it, it empties completely. It was in my phone goes flat. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm laying on the ground and I'm afraid to get up because I'm afraid I'm like I'm hurt. I'm like, yeah. am I okay? I'm like, yeah. tell yourself you're just okay. Give right. yourself a minute before you even try. And um, I'm like, okay, it's a sign. Mm. And I know what the sign is for me because it's like I've been trying to like cut back on the start. <laughs> 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 and I've had the physical emotion of like, you don't need to keep having those Starbucks, kid. You know, it's like you can have what's you know, it's not, you know, whatever. So I'm like. So I just listen. It's like yeah. all different ways of listening, right? It, it knocked off my feet listening. Sometimes it's, I remember many years, I would have a physical problem. Mm. And, and, and one time I had to have a, I had to have um like a skin cancer kind of thing or not, you know, pre-cancer thing taken mm -hmm. off. And I, my face was all not looking good. And the doctor's like, you don't want to do any public presentations for about a month. And I'm like, what? I'm a speaker. I'm a trainer. I'm a consultant. That's what mm -hmm. I do. I show up. I facilitate. He's like, well, you're not going to look too good. <laughs> and, and to me, again, it was like, take the month. Yeah. You know, I mean, I still just work over the phone and that kind of stuff, but I did not do right in person. If you know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's interesting because I think for, I think for those of us, listening that have some work to do here I think it can be intimidating or easy to to listen to someone like you who's been living and breathing and teaching this for time for some time and and feel like feel like there's some end goal to it right like and there's really not like even someone who lives and breathes it has an experience where she's falling with her Starbucks in her hand, right? Like, absolutely. It's not perfect is what I'm, I'm yeah. getting at. Yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you utilize what you've learned here and what you've, what you've shared so far in perhaps times of, of challenge and struggle or in times of you know, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of even something as extreme as, as a death in the family or a, a death, like how, you know, is it, is there times where you just sort of put things on pause or like, how do you, how do you apply this to times that maybe really aren't joyous and that shouldn't be joyous for a moment? Yeah. So I, I guess part of it is I don't, I, I have a new thought process, which is there's, 
there's an opportunity to see love and goodness in everything. Mm. Okay. And, you know, when you talk about death, you know, um, I, I just have a new view of like how wonderful for that person to pass on at any moment that they've chosen and how I can still connect with them mm. even when they pass. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, and, and there are challenges that come up, right? I mean, things happen, right. you know, big things happen, right? Financial or personal or relationships mm -hmm. or happens to your kids or happens to your spouse, you know, maybe your spouse is completely unhappy, whatever, right? right. So all these things. And so all I know is that all, what, what I can control for myself is me. Yeah. Right. And showing up, um, and honoring that myself and bringing the love. I mean, I just, part of my own personal mission is to just to be love in every moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can get pulled off and pulled out of it and react to react, be reactionary to things. And sometimes you downright do things that aren't nice or not good or whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. people, whatever, all that still happens. Right. And you come back to I'm love. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my best. I'm putting that out there. And I also had, you know, the opportunity to see someone I, I live with, my spouse, who no matter what happens, sickness, health, death, you know, all kinds of stuff that's gone on, he maintains his routine because mm -hmm. his routine is what makes him happy yeah. and makes him competent and makes him okay every day, right? Like, I mean, sometimes it's like those things are what kind of stabilize you or energize you or, you know, ground you. Yeah. And so I used to be like, well, I work out except when I'm sick. He's like, well, I keep working out. I'm like, well, that's, you know, you should rest. He's like, no, that's what I do. You know? Yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, we have things happen and it's like, well, and I'm still going to keep doing this. I'm still mm -hmm. going to, you know what I mean? I'm still going to keep doing whatever those things are that for me are really important. Like we're about to have guests for three weeks at our stay at our house. Mm. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, but and he's like, and I know he's going to keep doing him the way right. he does. Him. You know what I right. mean? And I'm going to keep doing me the way I do me. And I'm going to feel like, and I'm going to ask him to join in. Like, we're going to go play pickleball on, on uh, Sunday because we love pickleball. Yeah. And we're going to say to this couple that's come to come and stay with us, you want to come? You yeah. know, we'll drop you at the beach on the way or whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, we can keep being us. And I can still have my dinners with yeah. my business colleagues that I set up because I like to do it and whatever, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's. I would say, keep with it, keep honoring your being. Cause remember the more you are able to honor and love yourself, the more you're able to bring that love into the world, mm -hmm. right. And be your best self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's this. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you believe that? Do you believe <laughs> that? Do you believe that if you take care of yourself and love yourself and honor yourself, that you can add more love into the world and brilliance? And I do. I, I certainly believe it um, rationally, logically, practically. I believe it as a concept. I have ex some experience with actually living it. <laughs> um, you know, I think I just still know that there's. It's the everyday where it needs work. You know, I think bigger picture on like more of a monthly quarterly basis you know i believe that but i still i will still find myself in the weeds quite often um i don't know i don't know yeah i don't know i'm also just um i the the, the big step that i have taken now is that I am working with a hormone nurse and gut health and 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 I bring that up because so much of where I feel I f I fall off the wagon is when my physical body feels like it's not within my control and it's around my cycle and it's like I take this nosedive and I become what feels like an entirely different person for certain points of the month and for the last however many years that I've been in therapy and utilizing all these coping strategies and you know taking things off my plate adding things on the plate like making adjustments there is still this element of 
my physical health, my physical body feels to be like a a barrier for consistent wellness, (laughs) I'll say. (laughs) So, So I'm in the throes of that right now. And I'm hopeful that the work that I'm doing with her will promote you know, more of that everyday ability because it's like, I'll, I'll wake up at a certain point of my cycle. And for a week, I'm, I feel like a zombie and there's, you know, I I'll try to do the walks. I'll try to this, but it really, it, it doesn't seem to matter all that much when I'm feeling that way and when whatnot. So, so anyway, it's just, um, I believe it, but it's hard to, there are times where I feel like my physical body just is like sorry (laughs) believe it all you want but like we're not going to be able to comply with what you want to do well you know what's interesting is like is your physical body saying just stay in bed and rest yeah totally and just sleep and rest totally what if you tried that yeah i i want to just but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh, it's i i what comes to my mind one of my one of my superpowers is like the infinite possibilities like i love to come up with all kinds of things and so i'd be like okay this is really interesting this goes on with my body for a week, a, year, a month. What is it telling me? What do I want? Desire when I'm in, when it's going on? Well, I desire rest. Well, what if I just gave myself a rest? Yeah. What if I just like once a month I had a babysitter for the five days and I could just rest? Yeah, oh, we could try that. Like to me, it's like it's all about trying. Like let's try that concept, see what happens, or well, let's try something else. Like let's just make it an experiment. Like yeah. ooh, let's try something and see if how I feel when I do that. I mean, that's one concept. The other thing I wanted to share is that a game changer for me on this, like, can you really, you know, be happy all the time, feel joy all the time or whatever. And I don't, you know, the game changer for me came when, when, um, when I had an experience with someone very close to me having severe depression Mm. and that that went on for months and years and it did not change. Mm. There was nothing you could do to this person up. there's nothing you, as an outside you know someone close to them I could not solve their problem they were just depressed that was it they had everything they had therapy they had every possible avenue and it was just going on to the point of like suicide thoughts mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff and so that's pretty pretty hard right mm-hmm. talk about challenging situation mm-hmm. for someone you're close to mm-hmm. how do I stay even okay knowing that when I want to help and save and fix and you know what I mean mm-hmm. so first I got to let go of all that those concepts but what I what I found out was that there's actually scientific evidence that says that there is joy a frequency of joy that goes on that's available to all of us in every moment even severely depressed people mm. I'm like whoa I didn't know that mm-hmm. So even severely depressed people who like say they don't know any joy, like they're really, they're, they want, they want, and their life is so joyless, you know what I mean? Hopeless and all that can tap into this frequency of joy as well. Mm-hmm. And then it's like learning that I can feel depressed and a little bit of joy. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like learning to tap into that so mm-hmm. that I could be really sad about my dad passing but also feel a joy. I could be really, you know what I mean? Whatever about all these things going on in my life, but still can't connect with that. And there's actually, I don't know if you've heard of this, but maybe you've already talked about it on your show, but there's therapists that talk about this. It's like, it's becoming a mainstream therapy concept for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Just kind of emerging that it's possible and that they're talking about it and, and how that can change people's lives. Because no matter what's going on, there is a way to tap into and feel even a little bit, even a little faintly, that frequency that's always there. Yeah. Hmm. But I didn't know that. I yeah, thought I'm, okay, I'm there's sometimes that you can do something fun. Like yeah. I, I, I thought like do something fun and you can feel the joy. Mm-hmm. Have a fun experience and you'll feel the joy. Like mm-hmm. I thought it was outside of you. I thought it was something you have to go do. You have to make happen. Yeah. I didn't know it was inside frequency that I could just tap into sitting here. Yeah. And people can lead you through an experience of how to connect to it within you, even, and this is what some of these therapists are doing for severely depressed people. Wow. And suicidal people. Yeah, no, that's, that's so interesting because we've, we've talked a lot about even just now, you know, the ideas for bringing in more joy by doing, you know, actually activities and, and all of that. And it's, we need that too, but the, the idea of just looking inward for it. Um, and I was thinking, 
and I wasn't sure if this is what you're going to say and it wasn't, but the, um, you know, a lot of the pop psychology and like therapists and, and online things that I follow and people that I've interviewed, it's a lot of, you know, it, like two things can be true at the same time, <laughs> you know, yes. like you can be, you know, to use your example, you could be sad that about your father's passing and also find some joy like it that you don't have to be polarized in just this one way like two things can be true at the same time I can I can love my kids and be in a hard moment with them <laughs> like they're not yeah. they're not one or the and, other you know and hate them you can yeah. you can love them and hate them you could yeah. you could you, totally absolutely yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and it's like such a um I remember kind of hearing it for the first time. My first experience with that uh, concept and how it was really put into play was with Dr. Becky, Dr. Becky Kennedy. She's like a parenting guru and not, you know, she's a psychologist, but she's since the pandemic really become like a a big face of um, parenting and psychology and and whatnot. And uh, it was like this revolutionary thing. (laughs) I was like, oh, you know, like simple, but not easy, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, Eileen, is there anything about what we've talked about that, you know, you'd want to make sure to leave people with today? Or is there anything that you would have wanted me to ask you about this that I didn't think to anything kind of lingering? Yeah, definitely. One thing lingering, and this really is, you know, coming back to how to live your best life in everything, in every way, I think one of the essential things that can really be, again, a game changer, a life changer is to be able to calm yourself mm-hmm. and to be able to connect inside and to listen and to relax and to connect to that frequency of joy that we all have within us. Mm-hmm. Because if you can do that, everything else is okay, right? Like you're saying, everything could be really horrible all around you. Mm-hmm. But if you know and have the ability to do that, you'll always be okay. And you'll always have access to that joy in every moment, no matter what, you know, I mean, matter whether you, you know, whatever life circumstances are, you miss a plane, you this or that, whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Things are delayed. You can't get out. I mean, just, you know, your, your kids throw up all over the house and the (laughs) new carpet and that, you know what I mean? Whatever's going on your business, they want refunds. They want the cancel on you, whatever. I mean, it's like all these things. right? Um, Right. But you know, you can come back to you, mm-hmm. right? And you can, you know, I don't know if you have had done any mini meditations or things on any of your your um, sessions before, but like just, you know, sitting and relaxing your body, taking some slow, you know, inhales and exhales, feeling your feet on the floor, kind of mm-hmm. bringing yourself from your head down to your feet, feeling that connection and then bring it to the heart and then opening your heart just inviting your heart to open Mm -hmm. and feeling relaxed, feeling like what your energy is within your body, feeling that relax. And, and what I like to do is like, just inhale love Mm because it's always out there and available to us in every moment in the universe. Just like inhale it and feel it go through your throat and your neck and your chest. And like, and and the love goes to every cell of your body and and then your body begins to tingle. (laughs) <laughs> and then you exhaling joy out into the universe mm-hmm. and adding to the beauty mm-hmm. we just did that in, in one minute yeah and that's probably the most valuable thing of the whole conversation we had yeah it's just the ability to just do that anytime you want for yourself yeah that one moment yeah i know i know i know <laughs> i know <laughs> just doing it that is the fun part. <laughs> I know, but I but I do appreciate and I do think that the thing that I have to remember is, you know, like you said, that was one minute. It's not, it's not an hour, it's not a half a day, it's not anything that cannot get done in a day. Like I think the the buildup sometimes is more work than it is to just do it. <laughs> Yeah. And and also, you know, bring it into your life. Like you could decide that on every podcast, we do a minute like Mm. together for you. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. For for the person you're talking to Mm -hmm. and for your audience, because 
it's so beautiful and so loving and feels so good. You're going to bring that right into that. I now do that in every talk that I do. Hmm. I bring it in somehow, some way. Yeah. It gets weaved in. So that's possible. Yeah. That, um, that's a good idea. The other, the other fun thing I just weaved into my life was a uh, hundred sit-ups. <laughs> and I, I, I my, yeah, like I told you about my husband and his morning routine and we were taking a three week vacation trip together. Mm-hmm. And I knew he was going to get up and it's going to take him an hour and a half to do his routine every morning. Yeah. We're not, before we even have breakfast, he's going to be up. And I'm like, okay, I can lay in bed, which I've done many times. Right. <laughs> I go back to sleep. He goes, doesn't think. I'm like, but you know, 100 sit ups would be pretty good. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like, and it only take, took me like eight minutes. I could right. time myself, you know, different, various kinds, but right? I don't do the same kind. I do like, you know, yeah. resets of different things. And I, I tell myself, and I've been doing it now for over a year. Wow. There's no excuse to not have eight minutes first thing when you wake up. There's just right. like no excuse. Like, I don't have eight minutes. No, you have eight minutes. Right. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. And you have to, you have to sometimes, like, I've had to do that too, or I've had to time something to really show myself, you know, this, this thing you've been dreading, it took you four and a half minutes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whatever that is. Right. 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 I mean, some people, have, it's, it's, I don't get out of bed until I drink my glass of water or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, we all have different things, right? Or I meditate or whatever, but just, you know, it's fun little things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. All right. Well, Eileen, thank you so much. I will see you soon before we know it in November. <laughs> we'll yes. be here so to soon. See you. If that's going to be fabulous in our I land. Know. I know, I know. And I think we'll, uh, we'll be sharing the stage a little bit. So I'm sure we'll get into this and more live in person. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed every minute. Thank you. I absolutely love this conversation. I love that this person's in my family. How cool. Uh, But for those of you who've been listening since the beginning, you know how I've come pretty far on my mental health journey, along with just dealing with the chaos of motherhood and trying to figure out who I am and what I want to be. But it is hard to not feel burned out at times. And it's the constant questioning of where do I put my energy? Do I put it into the podcast, into the kids, into my marriage, into myself? And after speaking with so many women over the course of the interviews that I've done and just in the DMs and in my personal life, I know so many of us struggle with this. But that's why I love this conversation because Eileen gives us some great takeaways for how to not only reignite that passion for our work and for ourselves and to get back on track with what truly makes us happy, but also just for how to live in a more aligned and peaceful way. I like the idea of nuance that she brought up from evaluating what you wanted based on where you are now to simply embracing the full spectrum of what we're feeling. There's something super valuable about understanding that it's okay to be flexible, it's okay to change, and it's okay to have multiple emotions going on at the same time. You hear me say a lot, like two things can be true, and that's something I've really had to work on so much of my mom guilt and just like wife guilt and friend guilt comes from feeling like I'm failing if I'm unhappy or I'm struggling or I'm not meeting all of the wants and needs of everyone in my life. And we might think that we should just be appreciative or grateful for what we have, but it's okay to love our kids and love being a mom and also feel like it's hard and struggle and not want to do it sometimes. (laughs) And so I guess what I'm saying is the point of this conversation is that the more we can embrace the entire picture of who we are as moms, entrepreneurs, spouses, women, the more we can find some real inner peace. And it's, it's so much easier said than done. But what I really loved about what Eileen said about starting with just one small moment a day I know when I think about all the to-dos and mental load of all the things, it can be so hard to wrap my mind around doing something for myself that will bring me joy 
but it's it's the one moment it's starting small maybe like she's mentioned reading a chapter of a book or drinking an hot beverage that's meant to be hot that's actually hot <laughs> or just something like walking outside without any airba airpods in or on the phone at the same time we don't have to start with all this pressure to find happiness everywhere or be joyful all the time or make it this really you know overwhelming task of getting a babysitter or you know it just can be the moments because over time we can work on the small moments to make them bigger and make them longer lasting and make them more consistent and I feel inspired by this conversation. This conversation doesn't overwhelm me. It makes everything feel doable and manageable and like goals, you know? <laughs> so if you're feeling the same or you want to hear more about this and actually meet Eileen, trust me, she's just such an energetic and I don't know, she's an inspiring person and I'm super grateful to know her. And you can also meet her live in person at Luann Nigara Live this November in Orlando. It's November 5th through 8th. We have such a great event planned for you. I'm co-hosting. We're doing all things health and wealth. Eileen is a big part of that. Go to LuannLive.com to learn more and register. And let's meet in real life. How fun. All right. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. SAS Says is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. This podcast is meant to be educational and not meant to replace professional therapy or professional medical attention. To learn more about today's show and what's new in my world, head over to sassays.com. Thanks so much. Talk later. Talk later.